Uh, my aunt is always influencing my grandfather's decision to hurt us. That's the thing. So when we talk about the aunt, we're talking about manipulative members of your family who will go and say something. So they kind of move from here to here to here to here, right? They're going to say something here, whisper a little something in their ear, and then when it comes to grandfather's ear, and then when it comes to you, they're going to whisper something in your ear like, oh, you know what, don't worry about it. I'm going to talk to your grandfather. And then she goes to the grandfather's like, hi, these kids are crazy. You have those members of your family who are manipulative AF and nothing you can do will stop them from being manipulative. Absolutely, nada, nada. They go and they spin stories here and here and here that actually deliberately cause confrontations, confrontations between those members of the family. So they lie to this one about this one, they lie to this one about that one, and then boom, ding, 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 and they just sit in the watch back. Then when you confront them, it's like, no, but that's what I want to say. That's not what I did. And it's just like, really? Uh, body shaming. What? Thank you. Thank you. Body shaming. Mother, sister, aunties, aunt aunties, everybody. Wow, you've gained so much weight. Wow, no ne hakakang. I can do why you so. Now, even when you've lost weight, hey, hey, but who? Oh, so tell you, how about you? Why? Why are you going to the gym? Why are you going to the gym? Why are you still going to gyms? Why are you doing this, this, this? What? No matter what it is, they will body shame, and no matter how old you are, they will say, who are you? And then now, when someone says that to me, and says, who non Zhuang? I, I respond, you like non Zhuang is like you've gained so much weight. I respond and says, Well, clearly means I'm happy. And then I walk off. I don't give them enough room to even give me a comeback. I don't have time. Because I grew up my whole life with you making digs at my weight every single time we would meet at a family function. Every single time. My mother never did that. My father never did that. But other members from outside my immediate family, we don't even do that to each other. I'm not going to sit here and tell my sister that, yo, no, Nezhuang, whatever. We don't talk like that to each other. I don't talk like that to my friends. So who gives them the audacity and the, the fragrant audacity to do that? What do you even fucking mean? And with people like that, they've got no idea how mentally this is a trigger. Because we all have body issues. All of us. Gain, lose, man, woman, did it, did it. All of us at some point look at ourselves in the mirror and be like, itch. Gotta do better, sis. All of us. So what gives somebody the right to come to you and say that those kinds of nonsensical things to you? Jesus. Stay away. Period. For me, with somebody like that, Period. But you can also say if you've grown, how unonejuang, okay, what is it to you? Gain gout disturb. Is my gaining weight disturbing you? Is my gaining weight a problem for you? Is it changing the price of bread? My gaining weight. Because eventually at some point, we growing up, you're gonna have to fight back. But now we're gonna have to fight back without being disrespectful because we've been taught that way. But then you can ask somebody, then how is it affecting you? The fact that I am gaining weight. Am I destroying your couches? Eh? Am I finishing the food in your house? Am I, what am I doing to make you feel that you can come up to me and, be, and, and talk like that to me? Why? At 34 years of age, you're mad. You're mad. My older sister, mid-40s. Her money is for travels and pampering herself. And then she comes back and asks us for rent money, groceries, toiletries, etc. Her, our mom takes care of her two kids already, enabling. I understand that the mom would take care of the two kids already because grandmas are grandmas. You know what I'm saying? They're going to love their little grandbabies, even when they know that their own babies are acting a fool. And I get that. But it's enabling. It's the mere fact that we allow. I have enabled many of my family members. I've enabled them to speak to me the way that they want to speak to me and say that I'm sensitive and come down a mountain with me. I've enabled them because I've allowed it. I've allowed it and allowed it and allowed it. 
and even the ones who would come and ask for money, I've enabled them because I feel bad. Somebody's not going to sit here and starve while I eat nice croissants and all these fancy foods in the house. Meanwhile, one of my family members is not eating or doesn't have electricity. No. So I'm going to help them. You know what I mean? But the problem here in this case is enabling. We enable. And we do it with good intentions. It's always done with good intentions. But unfortunately, the results and the repercussions from there is somebody who does something like this. So there's money to go travel and go on holidays and blah, blah, blah. So this person, ushap, if they can travel and whatever. So they're working, then ushap, but can't take care of the kids. Always coming back to borrow money for food, for rent, for groceries. Why? <sighs> My family is toxic AF. They never address anything. My uncles are the worst. They are mean. Yeah. It's always, a lot of the time, it's always the auntie's uncles. A lot of the time. A lot of the time, it's always, it's always people who are just slightly outside of your immediate, immediate family that have a lot to say. A lot to say. Um, being taxed by your family members. Yeah. What's new? That's why there's a thing called black tax. It's crazy how there's a term that's been coined for this called black tax. Can you believe it? Crazy. My siblings only call me when it's money related and never bother to ask if I'm okay and it hurts. Yep. I can, I can, I can tell you with my sibling that you guys know. Um, Naledi and I, uh, with her having gotten older, have become incredibly close to such a point where if I don't go a day, if I go, I can go a day, but if I go two days without speaking to my sister, I call her, I'm like, da, love me. And she'll do the same thing. She'll be like, love me. Why haven't you called me? Why haven't you checked on me? And I'll do the same thing. And it's nice to just, because we both live alone, we check in on our family members like dad, moms, little kids. Uh, we check in on them all the time. But with each other, because we both live alone, it's, it's, it's just like we used to live together. So there's always that thing that, oh, let me check in on this little rug rat. Let me find out where this monkey is, you know. And, and, and just sometimes to ask, my sister and I help each other with money all the time. But even sometimes to just ask, yo, dog, are you okay? Are you good, man? Like, where you been? You know? Let's meet for a drink. Let's, uh, okay, I'm coming to your house. That kind of thing. Um, it's so important because it shows somebody, it shows you that you're valued, that somebody cares for you, that they're not just calling you because they want money, that they're calling you because they care to know how you are doing. They care for your well-being. So, um... Maybe sometimes you need to consider maybe just not borrowing the money and seeing how that fills you out. Um, they borrow money and never bring it back. Of course. Why would they? Right? Why would they? Here you go borrowing your family member 500 bucks. Hey man, I need something like this. Da, da. You know what? A lot of the time for me, I don't expect it back, especially if it's like a small amount of money. But if you want to come and borrow 5,000 Rand and I borrow you that 5,000 Rand, I don't do that anymore with, with friends or family. Nah, nah, it must be a life or death situation. I just don't do that anymore. But if they come and they borrow 5,000 Rand and they don't bring it back, it's just like, yeah, well, what did you expect? If it's like 20 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, and it's a family member who's not working, sure, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. But sometimes I expect that person to return the favor or pay it forward in different ways. But return the favor by just inviting me over to your house one day for lunch. Because even though you don't work and I just borrowed you 500 rand, I know you got groceries in the house, just invite me over for lunch one day. Just say, hey man, what are you doing? Or can I come by and uh, stay with you for a weekend? Let's just hang out or whatever. Something that reciprocates that, you know, I may have given the money, yes, but just do something that actually shows that you're thankful for what I've done. And now if you can't do that, instead all you're going to do is come back for more money and more money. Ah, gerara, 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 yeah. And I'm saying, I lost my mother condolences. 
I lost my mother. The first thing I heard after a month was how fat I've become. No one asked how I am talking to you only to ask you for money and nothing. Oh, it's the same person, but two different things. Um, firstly, condolences to having lost your mom. And how, how terrible is that? That the first thing that they do when they see you is say to you, Ooh, how about, Batung, are you okay? Or even call, this is the thing. The grown-ups, when you've lost a parent, the grown-ups, the aunts, the uncles, the whatever, the cousins who are older, they, all of them, blah, blah, they don't call to check in. They barely do. Instead, they expect you, the grieving party, the one who's grieving more than they are, they expect you to be the one reaching out. They expect you to be the one saying, hey, man, uh, yeah, Nikhil Cheka, I was just checking in on you guys, blah, blah, blah. How are you? How? I have lost my mother. I haven't lost uh, my, 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 uh, I was going to mention something and then I realized some people might get upset. I haven't lost my wallet. I haven't lost my parrot. I've lost my mother. I've lost my mother. So for you to expect me to be the one again to come and be courteous and check in on you, when you as the grown-up could actually pick up the fucking phone and call me? Really? I'm joking. Not worth it. Anonymous, of course. All I can say is that my toxic family members made me believe I was never good enough. They planted all sorts. The narcissists, the manipulators, anything that they can do or say to make themselves feel powerful. Like they own you. Like they, you're some sort of whatever little fluffy toy that they can play around with, toss over here and there, blah, 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 while they destroy your mental health, while they destroy any form of you seeing yourself as a worthy person, all because they can. Planted all sorts of negative things in my mind. That's when I knew I had to move out. Everything is so much better after moving out. It hurts the most because, yeah, my parents... Huh? It hurts, it hurts the most because, again, yeah, my parents, okay. I've learned how to live uh, without them. Um, that time I left home at 22, uh, Kelly a student and unemployed. Well, good for you for making your way through your life and making, and making a way for yourself. And good for you for choosing yourself, choosing to feel that you can't be in this certain situation and that you deserve better than this because you did. You do. You still remain to do so, even this day. So, uh, good for you for choosing you. Good for you for choosing you. My brothers don't help out. But when they need help, they label me as toxic and selfish. And I'm at a point where I don't care about what they say. They chose not to be family and I'm fine with it. Um, let me stop right there. She says something else. Yeah, with siblings, it's a little bit tough. It's a little bit tough and I'm not going to get into too much detail with the siblings one because yes I I fight with my siblings all the time I don't get along with my siblings sometimes well not all the time but on off whatever but um my problem is if I'm going to be labeled a certain way because I live my life a certain way whether it's by my sibling or my family member or whatever or if they lie on me and lie on my name or if they um uh, they just manipulate a situation so that it benefits them. So now today they can come back and talk, call me toxic like your brothers do. Crazy. Gotta go. Maybe all I don't, I just don't need to speak to you anymore. I feel like you need to go your way. I'll go mine. It's all good. We're not going to fight about it. Everybody's going to be happy. How long have I been talking? Oh my God, this video is going to be so long. Okay. To do. Um... My mom being the perfect caring mom to my friends and anyone else really except me. Yeah. I have a friend whose mom did the very same thing. Every time we would rock up, she would be sweet, she'd be this, she'd be this. But then the things that she would say to her own daughter and do to her own daughter was insane. Was insane. Insane. I'm so sorry. And I feel like I, I don't want to give advice. I'm not trained to give advice with this. Um, that's why I just said, let's share our experiences because I am not trained to give advice on this. So I don't want to give advice on this. I feel like, um, all I can advise is that you need to put yourself first. 
whether that means removing yourself from a situation or not engaging with certain members of your family or seeing a therapist so that you can be able to emotionally uh, find bearing and, and, and figure out how to, um, you know, live with this without it uh, emotionally damaging who you are at your core. Do what you need to do. But I won't sit there and say, no, maybe talk to your mom. No, that's not my place and I'm not going to start today. I have an older sister who bullies me and abuses me emotionally. I grew up thinking, uh, being manipulated into thinking that the problem laid with me. I'm deeply scarred and I've lost uh, myself. And it still goes on and I don't know how to stand up for myself. That's a very, very difficult one because with sisters, sisters, you know, sisters are expected and meant and seen to be close and all of that. But sisters fight a lot. And, um, and sometimes when you have two very different personalities, like with me and my sister, we've got two very different personalities. My sister's very loud and extroverted and I'm introverted. And when we do fight, when we do have uh, confrontations or whatever, uh, initially, when we hadn't learned how to confront each other without hurting each other, initially it would be a screaming match. It would be this, this, it would be throwing things, it would be not throwing things, but it would be saying really horrible things to one another. Until we grew up and we had a chat and we said, we're not going to do this to each other, we're not going to destroy each other like this. This must stop. So we figured out a way to mitigate our confrontations and a way to deal with them without having to hurt the other. And also knowing that once we are done talking about this, we take some time, we cool off, we come back, we talk about it, we move on. We don't remind each other that, yeah, I did this and you did this and I didn't do this and did. Nah, nah, we don't do that. We don't do that. We just move on. We move forward. My older brother uses his bipolar disorder as an excuse to treat us like shit and emotionally blackmail us. <sighs> Maybe I think I'm not, I'm not advising. This is something that I can't advise on. Um, but I think maybe it's it's time maybe you involve someone like a therapist or involve an elder family member or things like that. Somebody who might be able to sit down and speak to him. But I feel like a therapist for everybody involved would be a good idea. It was all fun and games when me and my cousins went out drinking and chasing boys. The moment I fall pregnant and Bay asked for my hand in marriage, things changed. Today, till today, they AWOL. He paid Lobola and I decided I want no wedding. We went to HA with our immediate family and uh, we happy. That's it. That's choosing you. That's choosing you, your life with your family and your husband and that's it. Whoever is not on board with that or... Let me see, time? Okay. Whoever's not on board with that or who has a problem with that, you can you can toxic mothers who are emotionally unavailable scarring you for life that is a very very difficult one that is a very difficult one because we look to our mothers for nurture and we look to our mothers for uh, comfort and emotional security and mental security so when you have a mother who is just completely dissociated with you in that way emotionally and become toxic towards you it's it because they just can't be there available for you it's it's really really difficult and i feel like that's one of the more serious things where um therapy is is honestly for me um um a very important source and if you can't afford a therapist you can also do counseling government has counseling centers where you can go free of charge where you can talk to somebody about things like this my my cousin recently insulted and lied just because I refused to fight to sign a family check. Can you imagine what people will resort to to make you seem bad or to make you seem like you're a horrible human being just because you should refuse to sign a check handing over money just because you refused? Crazy. Once you do something nice for you, for them, they start feeling entitled and expect something every single time. And sometimes it takes advantage of your kindness. Absolutely. Like money. Like having them over and spending time with you. Now they want to come over all the time. Because they know when they're here, they have a great time. There's Netflix and chill. There's alcohol. There's all sorts of things. So they want to be here all the time. 
But when it comes to them entertaining you or doing something nice for you, ha, ah, shame. This is how it starts. So I'm an only child and I'd always seen my cousins and brothers as sisters. I currently am going through a rough time in my life. So I found out that my cousins were gossiping about my current circumstances. When I confronted him, all he said was sorry, lesson learned. Now I regard them as my cousin. Some family members are toxic and they are praying for your downfall. Absolutely. A lot of family members wait and wait. They are very patient when it comes to seeing your downfall. Oh, they'll be patient for your whole life when it comes to seeing your downfall. And all you can do is just shine. When you know that there are people that want your downfall, shine, baby girl. Shine like dinna lady, na lady, na lady, na lady, na lady. Shine. For me, it was my mamnani bullying my 11-year-old sister because she has issues with my mother. Can you believe it? A lot of them do this. So because they have a problem with your parent, they have a problem with your parent, they automatically, it trickles down to you. Now they don't like you. Just because they don't get along with your parent. Now they don't like all the kids in that family because they hate the father. Because they hate the mother. Now they don't, they can't stand anybody that's connected in, in, in immediate sense to that person. Can you believe it? What, what gives anybody the right to actually do that? So because when are you, and you know what, in so many families that happens and you see it unfold and you see it spiral out of control at family functions, at weddings, at funerals, you start to see how an argument or a confrontation between the elders of the family has now trickled down to their children. Now their children don't get along and now it's gonna trickle down to their children's children. So it becomes this generational curse that follows the whole entire family. It is, <sighs> Horrible, horrible. I'm leaning forward because I was at the gym today, so my back is actually quite uncomfortable. So, let's do all that. Ah, everything's so, everything's so. Okay, now, let me go to the screenshots. I took quite a lot and, come on, we're on 27 minutes already. My sister, who is my late uncle's daughter, is always finding a reason to fight or have issues with me. She has never been happy for me for anything and is always talking behind everyone's back. What's going on? Behind everyone's back. She's blaming her father's family, my dad's side, for, not, for her not doing well in life. Everybody says that she is like that. We must just accept her as she is because she's family. I'm over that. She fights with me because I call her out in family uh, disputes, uh, especially when she disrespects my family, especially my parents. I'd like to say we all have one of those. We all have one of those who will blame the family, the upbringing, the everything on why they are not doing well in life. We all have one of those. And unfortunately, I feel like with someone like this, disengage. Because you're going to fight them all the time. It's not going to make much of a difference. They've got it so ingrained in their mind that it's because of you that I am what I am today. So all you can do is just disengage. Honestly, just disengage. Okay, hi Katla, my comment may be a bit long. About two years ago, my family members disclosed my HIV status to a man who wanted me to be his. This man is close to that particular family member. I may be public about my status, but I believe it is still no one's place to disclose my relationship to anyone, especially the person I may potentially, my status, to anyone, especially a person I may potentially be in a relationship with. Absolutely. You may be public about your status. You may be public about anything, but it's no one's one. place to disclose such sensitive information. Till today, I don't speak with that family member because I believe he has invaded my personal space. And honestly, you don't ever have to speak to them because there is nothing more precious than that. A lot of people go through their whole lives not disclosing their personal status, their HIV status, or whatever other status. They go through all their lives not disclosing it because that's what works for them. And they should be entitled that privacy because this is a major thing. So for somebody to do it without your permission, to feel the need to say, hey, and I wait to utebe mutohe or HIV positive. What? What do you even fucking mean? What do you mean? I don't understand why you feel the need 
or you feel why would you do that what gives you the right to do that so honestly yes i probably would have done the same thing my uncle and his wife are christians mind you we are all we all are as a family so when they started going to church and becoming prayer warriors all of a sudden everything we do is satanic you put on black nail polish lipstick it's satanic when they visit your house and they find you watching tv it's satanic music is satanic jesus christ everything is satanic what <sighs> okay oh just so she's saying jesus christ everything is satanic got it okay uh you would think they worship the devil and not god because they're always praising him in everything and it's annoying uh, and no, we haven't confronted them. That's a lot. <laughs> so they were the certain way before they became prayer warriors. And now that they are, of course, think about it. Isn't it always the members of their church? It's always the people who go to church. Always, they will, they will be all about God and church and whatever, whatever. But the things that will come out of their mouth are shocking. And the only thing I can say, disengage. There's nothing that beats the power of just keep quiet, be silent, and just not be in that space. Don't allow yourself to be in that space. If you can't, if you're living with these people and all of that, you have to try by all means to disengage. If none of you can, then there must be some sort of intervention that happens. But unfortunately, what are you going to do about people who are going to use God as their excuse and tell you that this is satanic and this is satanic because God will not allow that? Ow! Ow! Jesus, then clearly me and you don't support the same God. Because my God is not going to care. Damn, what I am wearing. Or what nail polish of uh, nail polish of God on. Or my sexual orientation. Or what the God I pray to, I feel is like, it, the God I pray to wants you to come as you are, baby girl. Come as you are. For you are welcome in my house. It doesn't matter who you are, but she, I could go off and preach right now. My God. My God, ah, uh, shame, never that. All right, this is going to be the last one. I'm tired. I'm tired, and these are a lot. I'm really, really tired. After I gave birth to my son, I was literally always in the wrong at home. My siblings would make mistakes, and they wouldn't be called out on them. Uh, but I was even held accountable for their own wrongdoings. I thought about it and it was all because I had a child and I was 21 at the time. I couldn't even go out even just during the day. Whenever my baby daddy came over, it would be negative remarks on remarks. They would tell me that whenever my baby daddy came over buying uh, food for my child, he must buy food for the kids also. I know about this. This is a very similar situation to one that I know of with a friend of mine. Um, I was never happy at home. Everything wasn't good enough. And you know what the thing is? You're saying I was never happy at home. So I'm assuming you're out of home now. Thank goodness. Because first of all, first of all, your baby daddy ain't required to feed anybody else outside his own child. Number one. So what makes your family entitled enough? To one, have any sorts of comments about your baby daddy or have any sorts of comments about, no, how, no, go. It's like the family, it's like the mothers who will say, um, a mother who doesn't work but has a girl child who's like 21, 22. No, go. Whether you can use your body, you can use your whatever, bring food into the house, find somebody. There are parents who are weird. It's wild. I can't believe it. It's so wild. And I feel like, you, you're better off gone from this kind of situation because, wow, CC, there are family members who will manipulate a situation for their own gain, whether it's economical, financial, emotional, while at the same time they're ripping you apart. It's almost like no nothing you ever did was right. Nothing you ever did was right. So from this, I'm assuming that you've moved out and you know what? If I had a glass of wine, I'd be here. Kudos to you, baby girl. Do the absolute most. You deserve that and everything else in between. That's pretty much it from me. Whoo! This has been long. I think I've been filming this for about an hour now. I hope you guys enjoyed these two videos. I hope they were helpful. Honestly, I am not a therapist. I'm not, I'm not trained for this. I, I didn't go to school for this kind of stuff. But what has worked for me 
is to disengage, is to uh, dissociate myself from family members who put my mental health at risk, who put my emotional space in trauma. I do not have time for it anymore. And sometimes, don't, don't feel bad for choosing you because at the end of the day, you have to choose you for you. Those people aren't doing anything but hurt you. So why are you still feeling bad? Because they're your family, really? Sometimes your friends are more your family than your own family members are. So at the... Excuse me, it's the water. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you need to do what's best for you. It's not a lie when people say that. You need to do what's best for you. I'm going to go. I'm really, really exhausted. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to go and I'll see you in the next one. Sayonara.